All right, so this is going to be a rhythm guitar lesson, basically on how we play in time as rhythm guitar players. The most important thing to think about, and I do have lessons on the site <clears throat> that uh, that cover basic, you know, the basic construction of time. We're talking about meter, pulse, subdivision. We're real quickly though, for the sake of this lesson, to make it a little bit more self-contained, um, we're going to be using our metronome. Uh, it's set to 60 beats a minute, and what's going to happen is we're going to feel that pulse all the way through everything that we're doing and we're going to be playing in four four which means we're counting four beats to the measure one two three four one two and that goes through everything that we're playing right now all right now if we're playing quarter notes which there's one quarter note per bar or i'm sorry one quarter note per beat let's just play a, a g chord here and we're just going to strum down one Very simple. If I was to strum it in reverse, one, two, three, four. That's just another sound. But for a lot of what we're playing, if we're playing chord notes, we're gonna we want to hear the bass notes first. Now the next subdivision of time are gonna be eighth notes. And eighth notes we're counting one and two and three and four. And the first uh, half of each beat, which is where the metronome click is, is the downbeat. One, two, three, four. And then the second half is the upbeat. We're counting and. One and two and three and four and and there's two ways of playing eighth notes like that. There's all down strums, which I'll use if I'm playing something a little bit more driving. Three and four and you know it, whether you're playing like a like a lump feel and blues, like that sort of deal, or if you're playing something that's more you know more rock and roll where it actually has to have that kind of push and that energy, I'll do all down strums. If I want something that's more open though, I'm gonna alternate. One and two and three and four and one and two. Now, if I'm playing rhythms where I'm not playing every eighth note, uh, one, two and three and four and so I'm still feeling the eighth note subdivision. But if you'll notice, my right hand, my strumming hand, is not actually like stopping every time I'm not playing a note. I'm not going one, two and three and four and one. It just it gets real real choppy what we want is this continuity this smoothness through the rhythm and that only comes from actually feeling every subdivision all right so we've got that going on right now the next subdivision of time is going to be the triplet and that's three uh divisions and we're going to count it one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet now you'll notice that every other downbeat starts on an upstrum. So even though we're not going to play this feel very much, it's actually a really good exercise to do because it's actually going to help you even out the force of your downstrums and upstrums. We want everything to be as consistent as possible. Uh, a lot of times I'll have students where they'll, um, they'll play extra hard on the, the rhythms that we hear and then the stuff that they're not where they're just keeping the subdivision going, they won't. And what that does, that tends to distort the evenness of the, of the subdivision. All right, so for a lot of stuff, you could play one triplet, two triplet, three triplet. Yeah, or uh, a lot of funk feels, you actually do the reverse, and you'll start on the upstrum. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. And what that's going to do is that's on beats two and four, uh, which are the back beats, that gives you a little bit heavier strum. So you know, one triplet. kind of lay into it a little bit more it feels more like what the drummer is doing too we'll worry about that for another lesson the last subdivision we're going to deal with in this lesson is going to be the idea of the 16th note and the 16th note is where we subdivide the beat into four bits and we count it one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and and what i want you to do is just mute the strings all six strings with your left hand and just try and get that even one e and a now don't try and give it any musical inflection nothing it should be as robotic as you can make it just to get it dead even. You have to be able to play dead consistently even before you can do anything musical with this. Now, in the lesson, there's gonna be a, a fingering for a ninth chord. And what I want you to do with this, an E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a is try different rhythms with this, but make sure that your strumming hand is staying dead consistent. One E and five, two E and. 
I'll give you a couple rhythm patterns to play with um, in the written part of it. But what's going to happen here is that you don't want this hand to do anything different. This hand that plays every subdivision evenly, whether you're playing all the muted notes, whether you're playing strum notes, or you're laying something sustained, because that's where the consistency is. What actually creates the sound or the rhythm is this hand articulating whether or not the chord sounds. All right, so the right hand plays all of the rhythm, all of the possible rhythms. The left hand is actually going to create the rhythms that we hear. That's a big part of the um, controlling the instrument when we're playing rhythm guitar.